Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of blackberry leaves. So last month I had a video come out on the benefits of raspberry leaves. And a few years ago I had a video come out on the benefits of strawberry leaves and also grape leaves. So I'm wanting to continue on and this is going into my uh, herb and more profiles where I share the benefits and uses of m many different things, but especially liking to focus on things that we might not think about. Obviously, we know that blackberries and raspberries and strawberries and grapes are, are not only great to eat, but are loaded with vitamins and are, and are really healthy for us. But a lot of times there's things that grow in our garden that we just don't think about, such as the leaves from our berries and also blueberries as well. So now I'm moving on to the blackberries. So I'm gonna start off by listing off the nutrients that you can find in the blackberry leaves. And that is vitamins A, C, K, riboflavin, and niacin, folate, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium, zinc, iron, and manganese. So as I'm always saying when it comes to taking things like calcium, it's always best to take it with certain other minerals such as potassium and magnesium. And when we eat the, find these things in nature, they're almost always combined with one or more of these other minerals. So thus, that is the best way to consume it is if you can get it from your different fruits, vegetables, and more. So now let's talk about the benefits. So some of these are similar to raspberry leaves as blackberry leaves are also beneficial to female reproductive health, you know, for menopause, PMS, and, and more. I do think raspberry leaves are a little more beneficial, especially for nursing moms and for labor, but blackberry leaves are also beneficial. So you could even consider mixing them together when you're making those teas. But blackberry leaves also have their own benefits. So let me move on. And some of those are that they are naturally antibacterial. They're especially good for helping with sores in the mouth. So if you have canker sores, cold sores, anything like that, a good blackberry leaf tea can be very helpful at healing those up. They're also anti-inflammatory and help to soothe the mucous membrane throughout the body. They cure diarrhea and help speed up wound healing. So if you have any external wounds, you, making a poultice or a salve using blackberry leaves can be very helpful. They help aid in digestion and can help cure ulcers. They've been they can be used as a hemorrhoid treatment. This will be applied topically. And they're a natural antioxidant, which means they also fight aging and help prevent cancer. And they also boost the immunity. They help to fight and cure common colds and flus. They improve blood sugar levels, so an excellent one for diabetics. They're great for heart health and prevent cardiovascular disease. And they improve brain function. So just like any other herbs, especially when you're talking about leaves, one of the most common ways to use them is in the form of a tea, whether it be a tea that you drink or a tea that you make a poultice out of and apply topically. You can also tincture them or dehydrate in powder and take it in an encapsulated form or even take that powder and mix it into a smoothie or just some juice so you can drink it down if you're just trying to get those benefits. I tend to be an herbal tea drinker. I drink herbal teas every single day, much of it out of my own homegrown herbs and more. And so I, and I'm always mixing it up and combining different herbs with some spices for added flavor and it all is going to depend on what i feel i need the most at the time now i have to admit even though we've been growing blackberries and blackberries grow wild around here so not only do we have some thornless blackberries out back but we have a patch of blackberries that grow wild out on our other property that we pick i have yet to gather and dehydrate the leaves for use in tea but I certainly plan to do that this year and I will be giving you updates on that. 
but it would just it'd be like dehydrating anything else just always make sure when it comes to drying herbs that you set it on a low heat such as 95 to 110 at the most is what i typically dry any of my herbs on and then when you go to make a tea out of it you don't want any of your herbs like that you don't want to boil them it is best to heat your water up and then pour it over the herbs and then let it steep. What I do is I put everything into a, my silver teapot I, that I found at a garage sale years ago, and it is from World War II. It's a great teapot, I love it. But I just put them in there, I get it, the water really, really hot, then I remove it from the heat or from the direct heat anyway. I, I put it in a place where it can stay warm and then just let it steep until I'm ready for it. So that's what I do when I'm using herbs. If I'm making, if I'm using spices such as cinnamon, cloves, and gin ginger, anything that's from a root or a bark, that's something I will simmer for a while. Then if I wanna add herbs like the blackberry leaves or whatever, I will add those in after that I've got that where I want it and then remove it from the heat and then enjoy it that way. But again, remember you can powder and encapsulate it, add it to smoothies. You can even take blackberry leaves, strawberry leaves, grape leaves, and raspberry leaves and cook them up like a vegetable. Um, they can be a little bit tough if you get the leaf for that, if you get the leaves when they're too old. So make sure for that you're using younger leaves. They're gonna work better for you that way. And then also when it comes to any of these leaves, it's always best to harvest them before they start putting on flowers because that's when they're, they're gonna have most of their benefits and nutrients because after that, once your plants start to flower, a lot of the energy is then going to be, it's already made its leaves, so a lot of the energy is gonna go into making those berries and those grapes. So that's why it's always best. It's not that they don't still have benefits later on. You're just gonna get the most if you harvest them early, but you also don't wanna over harvest because your berries need those leaves for collecting the sunlight and the, and the dew in the morning that gives it what it needs to feed those berries. Please share with us down below how you incorporate them into your diet, whether it be teas or using as a vegetable or adding to smoothies or whatever it is that you do. And if you know for certain that they've helped you with various things, share that with us as well. We, I love to read people's testimonies about these things. And don't forget to check out my full playlist where I cover all kinds of different herbs, spices, and more, and the benefits and how to use them. So that'll be in the description box. So click on show more down below, or it may even just be simply the word more if you're on a smart device most most likely you'll find it right over here down in that corner. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.